So at the 11th hour, the media has decided to finally start telling us about one of the most important scientific missions in NASA's history, certainly one of the most ambitious, the Lucy mission that will be launching at the time of this recording in less than 24 hours. And this is going to be a mission of great precision. And if it doesn't accomplish this precision, if it doesn't live up to the requirements, and they are steep requirements, it will fail. It has a 21-day launch window, and in order to get the correct orbit, the rocket must launch early in the morning, roughly at 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time during a short window each day. If it's unable to do this during this period of time, if there's a serious technical problem, Lucy will not have another opportunity for at least a year, assuming that it goes at all. I really wish that I could see this mission in person. However, my health has not improved significantly enough to allow me to make the journey to the Cape. Nevertheless, I will be watching, watching it bright and early tomorrow morning, and I just can't wait. But what is the big deal about Lucy? Why does this mission matter so much compared to the other scientific endeavors that NASA has embarked on? How could it be more important for for example, than the latest mission to Mars. Well, many people would argue that it isn't, but I would say that it has at least as important a mission as Perseverance does. And why is this the case? Well, as many media outlets have probably informed you at this point, this mission will be studying the history of the solar system in a manner that has never been attempted before. This probe will be exploring six of the Trojan asteroids in our solar system, and also one asteroid in our main asteroid belt. So we're talking about seven total targets here for one probe. This is something that really hasn't been seriously accomplished in the history of NASA, aside perhaps for Voyager 2, although really this is even more complicated than that probe was. This will be a 12-year mission, a mission where each flyby takes only a few hours, and in between flybys, Lucy will also be observing other objects, giving us a new perspective on the solar system in general. It is a very ambitious mission that's going to give us a wealth of scientific knowledge. But is there anything practical that's going to come out of it? Well, as a matter of fact, there is. There's some. This is something that has not been talked about by the media at all, and really NASA hasn't discussed it either. But it is indeed a mission of colossal practicality for the human species. And also, it's a mission that SpaceX got very upset about when they were not chosen. So much so that Elon Musk filed a complaint with the GAO. So what you're about to see is an updated version of a video that I released months ago about the Lucy mission. It's going to include a great deal of detail about the mission itself and also what could be accomplished in the future in the Trojan asteroids. My name is Jordan Wright. I was born in the same year that the human race took its first steps on the surface of another world, and then we promptly betrayed those people's legacy by never going back. But now, over half a century later, there's a new breed of pioneers that are seeking to finish what these people set out to do so long ago. But there is trouble as well. So it's time for commentators like me to stop being polite and start getting angry!
Now, a lot of you have seen this graph before, but I think that it strongly demonstrates just how little people give a damn about science for science sake versus other things like the military. The red bars are various military spendings, both direct and indirect, and the green on the left is all the sciences, not just NASA, but everything. So obviously finding a practical solution or a practical use for a space mission is always good. Now in October, to be precise, October 16th of this year, an Atlas V rocket will carry the Lucy probe all the way to a very special destination that has never been explored by the human race in history. Now, SpaceX fans may be wondering, why the hell does NASA keep using this expendable rocket for all of these high-profile scientific missions? Well, there's one very important reason. Even though they're using a Falcon Heavy for the Psyche mission, which is a very important asteroid mission, the Atlas has a completely spotless record. That's right, not one mission from this rocket, from its very inception, has ever failed. And it's over a hundred launches. This is one of the few rockets that's regarded as being completely safe to carry nuclear materials into space. This is a solid rocket and worth the expense, even though it's going to be replaced by the Vulcan Centaur, which will be far less expensive for a variety of reasons and ultimately have a lot of reusable aspects. But still, the Atlas is a great solution for important scientific missions that you don't want to lose. ULA will be carrying a very important payload, the Lucy spacecraft, which will be engaged in a 12-year mission to explore two swarms of asteroids that follow in front and behind of Jupiter, and they are trapped in what are called Lagrange points in between Jupiter and the Sun. Gravitational parking lots, essentially, and we have them associated with our planet as well. Once these asteroids are trapped in these locations in front and behind of Jupiter at a 60 degree angle, they never leave. So we're talking about asteroids that got trapped in these locations billions of years ago and never went anywhere. And if you're wondering about numbers, there's estimated to be over a million of them, a kilometer or more in size. Now, the first of Lucy's targets will not be a Trojan asteroid at all, but rather an asteroid in the asteroid belt called Donald Johansson, named after the discoverer of the Lucy skeleton, which was probably the most important discovery as far as human evolution is concerned. Now, after making two gravitational flybys of the Earth to increase speed, Lucy will sweep through the L4 group of asteroids ahead of Jupiter, exploring four very large asteroids, some of which are hundreds of kilometers in diameter, and yet we know virtually nothing about them. It will measure composition, temperature, all sorts of data, and then make its way to the L5 group of asteroids, which trail Jupiter, and there, it will study one target in particular, two asteroids that orbit each other at a distance of only 600 kilometers. Can you imagine what the night sky would look like from the surface of one of those asteroids? The companion asteroid would be many times the size of the full moon and would regularly blot out the sun. But in any event, the whole objective is to study the history of the solar system, as you can see here. This is extremely important because as of right now, our understanding of the formation of the solar system is a bit spotty. What really makes these asteroids different from all of the planets in the solar system? Well, one of the most important things is nearly all all of these planets have been substantially changed by their development over time and just by their very nature, volcanoes, tectonic activity, 
even the moon has been impacted by these sorts of things, whereas these asteroids have been barely touched. So they can tell us about what the solar system was like at the very beginning when everything was forming out of a massive cloud of dust orbiting the newly formed sun. And right now, we can barely see these asteroids, even with the Hubble. They only appear as tiny dots of light, which is why this mission is so vital from a scientific standpoint. But okay, as far as the vast majority of the population of this planet is concerned, who gives a damn about the ancient history of the solar system? What difference does it make? And it's difficult to answer that question. It doesn't really impact our day-to-day -day lives, nor is it going to have a major impact on our civilization to go and study these asteroids. Or will it? Will this probe, then you can see the solar array being unfolded here for the first time, just about ready to go this thing, I'm so excited, but how will this thing actually impact our civilization and make a difference to us on a day-to-day -day basis? Well, you know something? In the future, establishing a base on an asteroid like this one, which by the way is not being studied by the probe, could not only provide our civilization with an almost limitless amount of resources, but could also defend us for hundreds or even thousands of years into the future from almost certain annihilation. And yes, if you think I'm overstating things again, well, it's just like the video that I did about the Lunar Gateway, except this is taking it to the next level. Establishing a base in the Trojan asteroids would be the ultimate defense against asteroid impacts in the future, or even incoming comets from the outer solar system, or perhaps even interstellar sources. And yes, sooner or later, something like that is going to represent a massive threat to our planet. And the best way of stopping it is in the Trojan asteroids. Let me explain. Now, asteroids that threaten our planet do not orbit like normal planets do. They orbit at extreme angles and in a highly irregular fashion. As you can see, they come pretty damn close. But let's have a look at the orbital pattern. As you can see, when the asteroid gets to the furthest extent of its orbit, it slows down when it's the furthest away from the sun. Look how slow it's going at that point. And then as it approaches the sun and therefore our own planet, it speeds up considerably. So the best place to intercept an asteroid is when it's at the furthest extent of its orbit, also called its apogee. An asteroid interception mission launched from Earth or even lunar orbit is not only going to have to escape a lot more gravity, it's also going to have to contend with slowly increasing speed from the incoming asteroid. The closer the asteroid gets to Earth and the Sun, the faster it goes and the more impossible it gets to divert it from its course. The ideal situation is to identify the asteroid when it's going back into its position of apogee and then hit it with a kinetic penetrator or some other type of anti-asteroid weapon and knock it off its course. Even a slight diversion this far out in its orbit will change it sufficiently to miss the Earth entirely. And this is so much easier to do if you do it from the Trojan asteroids. You wouldn't have to even build a base on an asteroid. It might be better if you didn't. Instead, you would build a rotating base complete with artificial gravity in the asteroid belt, utilizing in situ materials mostly. And yes, this is far in the future, but still something that should be a goal and objective. But once we did it, it would be a lot easier to construct it because the materials, as you put it together, wouldn't go anywhere. Remember when I said that this was a gravitational parking lot, the reason these asteroids have stayed put for billions of years is because of gravity. A perfect balance between Jupiter and the Sun. A perfect dance in the solar system by a million participants. Unbelievable and really kind of magical. 
And let me tell you something, if I were to build a base close to an asteroid or utilizing an asteroid, this would be my target, Patroclus. And the reason this would be my target, and by the way, this is the last destination of the Lucy probe, is because it is a binary asteroid, as you can see, and as I briefly spoke about before. Two asteroids nearly the same size, orbiting each other at a distance of a mere 600 kilometers kilometers, and both of them are over a hundred kilometers in diameter. They would be gigantic in each other's night sky, and you could tether the two of them together with a space elevator and put your base between them, spinning like a top essentially between the two asteroids, generating artificial gravity. You could then send rail cars down the elevator to both asteroids, utilizing the resources on both of them. We suspect that there's a great amount of water, ice, and other vital materials on both asteroids. So the mission of this base would be twofold. Number one, to mine the resources of the Trojan asteroids, and number two, to defend the Earth against incoming asteroids and comets. Let's talk about the first one. Given the huge variety of asteroids that there are in these swarms, once again, a total of a million of them, they're at least a kilometer in diameter or more, there's likely all kinds of rare metallic elements in these asteroid swarms that would be incredibly valuable to our civilization. On top of that, there's enormous amounts of water, ice, and carbon that could be used to manufacture, of course, oxygen, water, and methyl ox fuel, assuming we were still using that in the future. All sorts of such valuable resources to our civilization, utterly vital to our long-term survival. But of course, this would have a secondary goal, in my opinion, to deflecting incoming asteroids headed for Earth or perhaps towards our other colonies. So in terms of asteroid deflection, the base would serve two purposes. First of all, as an observatory, and yes, this is a space elevator from Earth, which by the way is practically impossible with technology today or even in the far future, but still it illustrates the whole rotating artificial gravity base concept on a space elevator. Anyway, an observatory located in the Trojan asteroids would have a much easier time identifying incoming asteroids, especially especially something coming in from the outer solar system. No interference from space junk, no interference from the atmosphere, no interference of any kind, and it would have a better view of things coming in from the outer solar system. And in case you think Jupiter provides some sort of defense against it, as has been suggested a number of times, there are an equal number of scientists who believe that Jupiter actually presents a greater threat. It's enormous gravity pulling things in from the outer solar system system and slingshotting it into the inner solar system on a collision course with our planet. Jupiter may be as much of a curse as it is a blessing. And then, of course, Patroclus could also serve as a sort of missile base with kinetic penetrators or some other method of deflecting asteroids using almost no fuel or perhaps zero fuel to escape from the asteroid since they have such a tiny amount of gravity and you could actually use the rotation between the two asteroids to fling a missile off of the system and head it towards an incoming asteroid. It would be so much easier to intercept and deflect from that distance. Plus, those who are stationed on an asteroid such as this would have a hell of a night sky to see. And some of these asteroids are actually companions with comets. That's right, we've spotted cometary tails in the Trojan asteroids along with the asteroids themselves. The night sky would be filled with all sorts of points of light aside from the stars that we're used to here on Earth. Not that you would want to stay there permanently, of course. Now, if you think this is some kind of nutball idea out of my own deranged mind, it isn't. This is something that a group of scientists came up with, this whole concept of a base used for resources and deflecting asteroids, and it's linked in the description. So it really is a valid plan, and it's something that we can't do until we study the asteroids themselves. And Lucy will be the first probe to do that in detail. It's going to be an amazing mission.
And so, just a few months from now, this very reliable rocket, which is expendable and is wasteful, yes, and should be replaced at some point soon, but still, I'm going to feel good about this rocket carrying such an important mission to a place where human beings have never looked up close, one of the few places in the solar system that still has not been explored at all and it's going to be a moment to remember and not only that it's not just going to be for science and that's a reason enough in my opinion it's going to be for the future of our species Okay, so a lot of you may be asking yourselves right now, why doesn't this guy ever get angry about the whole issue with Atlas V, the fact that it's not reusable and more expensive than SpaceX's solutions, both Falcon Heavy and Falcon 9? Couldn't SpaceX's suite of rockets carry out this mission just as good as Atlas V? Well, the answer is a conditional yes. Remember, back in 2019, when the final decision on this whole thing was made, Falcon 9 had experienced two accidents, one in 2015 where it exploded in mid-flight, and one in 2016 where the rocket blew up on the pad, taking the payload with it. Now, since that time, Falcon 9s are not static-fired with the payload on board, but still, if we were to lose one of those rockets during this particular mission and a 21 day launch window, it would be game over. So NASA made the decision that Atlas V and its extreme reliability, the fact that it has sent probe after probe to numerous destinations throughout the solar system was the best solution for this mission. Now Falcon Heavy will be taking a very high profile mission to 16 Psyche, another asteroid, this one in the asteroid belt, but it's a single asteroid, far less complicated. Does this mean that NASA doesn't have confidence in SpaceX? Well, obviously they do. If they're signing a rocket that's only had a few successful launches, that is the Falcon Heavy, to carry out such an important mission like 16 Psyche. But when it comes to a mission of this incredible complexity, I really can't blame NASA for going with what works with what has worked time and again without fail. Now, since 2019, or indeed since 2016, Falcon 9 has had a spotless record. It has done phenomenally well and is certainly qualified to be carrying out these kinds of missions. Falcon Heavy has had very few launches, however, and given that Falcon Heavy's propulsion is really necessary for certain types of missions beyond low Earth orbit or the moon or something along those lines, then it's still important, at least in my opinion, for Falcon Heavy to prove itself as Atlas V has had to and Falcon 9 has had to before NASA can rely on it to carry out missions of this incredible complexity. Now they're going to be getting their chance. SpaceX is going to be carrying out a number of high profile scientific missions beyond low Earth orbit for NASA and this is going to be their chance to shine. But until that happens, it is up to ULA and the Atlas V to do the job. If you like what I have to say, if you like my blunt honesty about these topics, and if you like me re-releasing some of my material from the past and updating it, you know how to support me. It's all in the description. So until this mission actually takes off tomorrow and proves to be NASA's finest hour, as I really hope it is, I urge all of you, to stay angry about space!